this is your story, your book. What do you want the contents to be? Nobody else is in charge of it but you. And that's another thing. There's not one way to do anything. You, there's so many creative ways and you know, every person can reinvent the way. So just go for it however you can with whatever gifts God gave you. Welcome to the I Own It Podcast with Ben Reinberg. We are live from Laguna Beach, California at the Ben Reinberg I Own It Studios today. And we have another outstanding guest that I'm really excited to chat with today. We just keep rolling out incredibly talented women. And today's guest is no different. Kavita Chene, welcome to the show. It's so nice to see you and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Ben. I'm such a fan. I actually just um, followed you on Instagram and you have done so many amazing things. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. You know, one thing I, I, I am fascinated about you is you have a really cool life story. And it's hard to summarize, like you're a sports sideline reporter, yeah. you're a TV personality, you're a wine entrepreneur, which I am as well. I'm a wino as well, and many more things. Um, let's start things off and share more about your background and what professional things you're up to recently that you're excited about. Yeah. So as you said it, I worked in television for a long time. I was, I actually was an entertainment host and I hosted a lot of like lifestyle entertainment shows. Um, and I wanted to get into sports because I felt like all those roles were going towards more blonde American girl next door looking at the time faces. And I thought there's no place for me. I'm not getting any of these jobs. Maybe, you know, I'm not blonde enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not this, I'm not that, whatever. And I thought, you know what? This is just like, I, I, I got to like figure out where I can go. That's not such like an uphill battle. And I was a sports fan because I, I went to University of Florida, go Gators and all that. Um, and I thought, you know, what? there's not a lot of women in sports. So I started a YouTube channel and it blew up and eventually had all this content that I created a reel. Fox Sports came along. They saw it. They loved it. Um, they started me out like from the bottom. I covered high school football, which was actually my favorite out of all sports, uh, fascinatingly enough. And then I went up to cover MLB, NHL, um, MMA, like you name it, NFL. I actually, one of the executives from the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, loved my, my tweets about all of my different interviews and whatnot when I was with Fox Sports. And they reached out to me and said, you know, we're looking for a game day, sideline reporter, a game day host. Uh, are you going to, would you be interested? Do you want to interview? And I said, sure. And then I started working for the Jaguar and, you know, I did that for almost 10 years. Um, so covered sports and I was working all year round. Right. And I just needed a break. So I took this trip to Europe. I went to France and Italy in the summer for a month and everywhere I went, they would offer me this beautiful glass of rosé. Now, mind you, I know you're a wine fan. I have always loved wine because my parents like drank it when I was growing up. I watched them at wine parties, but I wasn't like a big rosé person. I was more of a red wine, white wine person. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with rosé in France because <laughs> yeah. it's much different than the rosé here. Right. Um, I come back home. I want to like recreate that whole vibe. And then I go to all my favorite restaurants and I order a glass of rosé. And at that time it was 2016 and I hated it. I was like, I don't, this doesn't taste the same as the wine I drank in France. Where can I get it? And my last name, Shanae, my friends would just joke around and they'd say, Shanae Rosé, you should get your own rosé. You should bring that wine back from France. And then I thought, aha, that's not a bad idea. So <laughs> I, um, I had a friend that was a distributor at the time and, uh, you know, it's a smaller distributor. And he said, listen, there's this event in Cannes where there's all the rosé winemakers in the world go every year. And he said, now it's business to business. He's like, I, I can't really get you in because you just like rosé, you know, it's not open to the public, but we can try and get you in on media passes. So we reached out and then I, because I worked in TV, we got the media passes. I did my content and whatever they wanted. I promoted it. And I also met with over a hundred different winemakers from all over the world. And then I found um, the family I wanted to work with and I've been working with them ever since. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So was it your parents that inspired you to get into wine? I thought it was interesting and you show great taste on your part, obviously that you want with French wines versus us um, share more about how, you know, you got into the game and, and how's it going and, 
And, you know, I know you had a profile in, in some different publications as well that I saw. Yeah. So my parents were like big into wine. They would have these beautiful parties with their friends. Um, when I was a kid, my sisters and I would be like peeking through like the little shades in this like hallway, like shade thing that we had to block off the hallway from the bedrooms when they'd have parties. And they would all bring in bottles of wine. They would like compare the labels. They would, you know, talk on the different notes and all this stuff. So I was exposed to that as like a kid. Then when I went to college, I loved wine because my parents would let me have sips of theirs, um, you know, just to taste. And so I didn't really like liquor per se. Like I wasn't like a rum drinker or vodka or tequila. And I loved wine. And then that carried throughout my adult life as well. You know, I just think it's it's fun. It's sophisticated. And I like that there's so many different notes and flavors and, and you compare with different food. The whole thing is just so exciting. I always loved it. So it's no wonder that I got in the business, but I had no idea that I was ever going to get in the business. Like I knew as a kid, I would be performing in some capacity. I knew I would be working in TV, but, and I knew I would do something in business, but I never imagined wine. And I'm just so excited that, you know, I am doing it because it's literally, I wake up every day. So excited. I love it. Here's my line. This is a rosé. This is a blog. Is that sip, Shanae? Um, Shanae Rosé. Oh, Shanae Rosé. Wow. I got I to gotta go buy a bottle of Shanae Rosé. Let, let me ask you something. So I love the point you made in your Forbes profile about ingredients. And how do you approach ingredients for sip, Shanae? And what are your thoughts on wine ingredients transparency? Right, right. So... Other countries, say, for example, France and Italy, you know, they don't put additives and preservatives and whatnot in their wine. They avoid it as much as they can. Um, here in America, like you go to Napa, you know, or other places, we don't really know what they're putting in wine. I know that the domain that I'm working with has awesome quality wine. My winemaker has an allergy to sulfites. Our wine is low in sulfites. It's no sugar because it's dry. There's old vines, 45 to 65 years old, um, and we have no additives. And I'm so happy about that because as a person that like likes to enjoy wine, you know, like daily, you know, I like to have a glass or, you know, if I, if I want to, you know, travel somewhere and drink wine, like I literally bring my wine because it's the only wine that I feel like doesn't give me a hangover and doesn't make me feel bad after two glasses. Um, and, and I'm sure you've experienced it because you're a wine drinker yourself. You know, when you have that awesome bottle of wine and then you start getting a pounding headache from it and you think, why is that? Well, it's probably because there's stuff in there that you don't know what's in there and it's probably not good for your body. So. Well, well, what, what is it chemically speaking that causes hangover? Cause obviously I, I drink, I'm loyal to a bunch of different vineyards and obviously it sounds like I'm going to be loyal to yours eventually. <laughs> and, and I think we're going there, but, but I, I've also learned as I've traveled throughout the world and I travel a lot around the country being in commercial real estate and what I do for a living and owning medical properties throughout the U S my company, that I always find that the Italian reds don't give you a hangover, you know? Yeah. And so what so like is a Napa red will, a Napa red will, you uh -huh. know? Yeah. So again, it's just anything that you add in it, you know, it could be sulfites, it could right. be whatever. I want to just make it easy and tell you, yes, yeah, it's sulfites, but it's not yes. like one thing. So mm -hmm. we don't know what's going in some of these wines. I mean, there's chemicals put in the soil. I mean, you don't know what's in them. There's toxins. So you just have to trust your body. I know, you know, I, I went to an event the other day and obviously like sometimes at events, like lesser quality brands are the ones that will donate, you know what I mean? Um, and they want to get their name out there and maybe people don't know about their wine. And I, I, I drank this rosé and I literally after a glass, I started feeling a headache and I'm like, this is not like me. It's not, you know, I mean, listen. I, I love it. I, I, you really have to pay attention to what you put in your body, right? Like ever since I had kids, I don't use toxins in my soap. I don't have it in my shampoo, my conditioner. I don't even use cleaners with toxins in it. I don't use laundry detergent, all of it. Like, you know, you want to just cut it all out. And it's the same thing with what you eat and also what you drink. It's really important. So when you're buying tequila, when you're buying vodka, when you're buying wine, make sure to research the brand and make sure that you're putting good quality in your body. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a great point. Well said. Um, <laughs> I'm a huge sports fan, obviously born and raised in Chicago, and uh, and now I live in California. Uh, I've, I'm a huge sports junkie, and obviously oh, I love the fact that you're a sideline reporter. Uh, what's it like being a sideline reporter, and, and what do you enjoy about it? Like, what's what's fun about it? Because I know it's a lot of work. Right. right. I'd love to hear, like, what, what's fun about it? What do you enjoy about being a sideline reporter? I feel like... 
becoming a sideline reporter makes it really hard to just like be a fan thereafter because it's so exciting being on the sidelines. I mean, you're right there in the action. You're seeing it all happen. You know, you could even like, you're so close. You can even get hit by a football or, you know, when they're celebrating, you're getting like the champagne all over you or whatnot. It's exciting. It's a lot of work, a lot of research. You have to obviously know who you're talking to. You got to know what's happening with the teams. You got to talk to the coach. Um, you know, things are changing very fast. You've got the IFB producers talking to you while you're live on television. Like it's, so much adrenaline it's amazing it's fun it's exciting you know and it's a lot of work i mean people think it's like an easy job it's really one of the most difficult jobs you're on live tv and again like i said things are changing every second so but i i love it i mean it's so much fun but it's really hard for me to go to a game now because i'm like i don't even want to go unless i'm like right there on the field <laughs> That's the problem. what's like a crazy give me a crazy story that you like that pops in your head that you encountered when you were on the sidelines Okay, well, when I first started out, I was doing um, MLS and I was like covering tailgating. Uh -huh. And one of the fans was like super drunk and I was like on live TV and he like had like a beer funnel and he walked over into my interview and funneled beer in my face. Oh, I wanted, okay. uh, I wanted to drink him, but I was just like, oh, <laughs> but I wanted to drink him. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that I'm was sure. Fun. <laughs> what what are so besides MLS, what other sports have you done? Like what's and is there a certain sport that you like better than others? I, and I'm talking about when you're working. Like obviously you might have a passion and gravitate to a certain sport, but is there a certain sport you do that you really like that it gravitates you like, you know, I enjoy, you know, maybe it, whether it's MBA or MLB or MLS, you know, is there something right. you really gravitate to? Yeah, yeah. I mean, traditionally, like what I love to do is football. I love covering football and I loved covering high school football more than I loved covering NFL. Wow. Um, I got to see the guys like from the beginning, like like Nick and Joey Boza, like, you know, uh -huh. I was covering them when they were in high school mm -hmm. and to see the progression. It's just it's so fulfilling just for me to see them grow in the business. Um, but overall, I love and I also did a lot of shows where I would like interview athletes about off the field and on the field and do like a one on one interview. And it would be like a sit down, like kind of what we're doing right now. I loved doing those types of interviews just and I could interview any athlete in any sport. And it was just so much fun kind of bringing them to like a human and not just talking sports and just finding out a little bit about who they are. I always found that interesting. <laughs> so there's a lot of big egos in sports and yeah. in the media. And how do you approach navigating those big personalities or the alpha males out there? I mean, I know in my industry, where there's a lot of alpha males and it's, and we are, men are very, real estate? <laughs> North real estate. yeah, we have, and what I do for a living, we have a lot of big egos. And so oh, yeah. um, with that being said, and, you know, men can be challenging at times. We're, we're obviously worried a little bit differently than women. <laughs> And, and I repeat that over and over. And I have a lot of women that work for me are on my leadership team. And I've learned that in spades that we're, that uh, you really have to understand how women operate and, and vice versa. How do you deal with big egos? Cause you're dealing with big egos on big personalities and you have a job to do. And you know, what are the challenges you see and, and how do you deal with them? I mean, I, in any industry, whether it's sports or business, you're always dealing with big egos and predominantly with men, you know, sometimes with women as well. Um, and you know, in terms of like the athletes with the big egos, you knew they were going to have them. I just knew how to talk to them. And I just, if they said something crazy, I went with it and I, you know, laughed and just, you know, let them indulge for a minute. I mean, when you know, somebody has like that kind of like, you know, harmless megalomania, narcissist type of vibe, you know, somebody that needs all that praise, you just give it to them. Who cares? Let them enjoy life. You know what I mean? So, play into them. Why not? You know what I mean? But it did come to a. It, you know, after dealing with it for so long, just with like executives, producers, um, like team owners, GMs and all that, I was like, I don't want to work for men anymore. Like, I, I want to do my own thing. And that's why I started my wine brand. So I, I wanted to be the boss and I didn't really want to have a boss anymore. So what, what have you learned about business? Like what were some of the things that you've learned that have really been interesting to you about business that maybe you didn't know that kind of were eye openers and said, Wow, this is this is kind of a different world than than being a sideline reporter. Like, well, share some of your insights that you've learned lately being in business. Well, I mean, I think just post COVID, you really have to have a pulse on the people that work with you and for you. You have to care about what's important to them outside of work. So, like, if you have someone working for you that has a family, 
and you know my COO, he's Jewish. And so from Friday throughout the whole weekend, we don't talk. I don't bother him. That's his time with his family. Shabbat Shalom. Go for it. You know what I mean? Right. And I have, you know, another employee who loves to travel. And it's like, you know, if they want to travel, you know, during times that maybe pre-COVID are not desirable, it's like, listen, do you want to have people stay with you long term? Or do you want to just have things the way you want them? You know what I mean? You can't have both. Um, it's a great so, point. It's such a great point. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's, that's really, I think really what it is, is like everybody after COVID, you know, everybody kind of wants to only do things that fit what their vision of life is. And, you know, even as a founder, that's why I started my business. So who am I to then tell somebody like that, that their life needs to look like this? You know what I mean? As long as they're getting where they need to get done, that's really all I care about. So I, I started Alliance a, a little over 28 years ago in commercial real estate and we own commercial real estate around the United States. That's what, that's what I do for a living in my company. And we had to evolve. So last five years we realized, so I got more heavily into personal development and realized I can share these methods and what I do with my employees, because we realize that your personal life and your business life tie into each other. They're married to each other. Exactly. Well said, you, you know, what? maybe you should be the co-host of this show. <laughs> You, you to do media. You're perfect. You're hired. So <laughs> anyway, so we realized I took a step back and I said, you know, how do we integrate people's personal lives and, and business life? So, you know what I found out? I said, man, Ben, you got to be vulnerable. You got to like crack open your whole life to everyone that works for you in the outside world. Because yeah. when you become vulnerable and I share about myself, I create this space for people to open up and share what they, they have to say. And so we started doing that and we started allowing that. And people are like, well, you're crazy. You know, people don't do that. <laughs> I said, your personal life, you know, everyone has a life, you know, outside the walls of our office or if they're working remotely. I said, if we don't get to learn about people, how do we help them empower them to become the best version of themselves? Absolutely. So we've created a system in our company where we're allowing people to walk in to the story, empower them to the story of what they want to become and who they, and what that does is it creates loyalty. It creates more revenue because they're happier and they feel that they can be more vulnerable in front of everyone in the office. And so we create that space. We had an interview yesterday, a lady was in my office, it's just a quick story. And, and I started sharing who I was, I was vulnerable. And then all of a sudden she started sharing who he was. Well, guess what? We hired her. Okay. And she's going to walk into our office here in our West Coast office. And she's so empowered because she's like, well, Ben and the staff here and the West Coast have given me a platform and an opportunity to share who I am and be authentic. So now guess what? She'll perform at a higher level. She'll totally. probably make more money yeah. and she'll have our back and she'll be like gold. So yeah. everyone out there, if you could be vulnerable and you could share who you are in your personal life, even in the work world, it will serve you well. I love what you just said because it's so true. And and I, I told you we had a lot in common. It's kind of scary. Yeah, no, but you know, what's even scarier is that there are people out there that, you know, it doesn't matter about, like, they don't even care really about making money. Like if they're unhappy, they'll bolt. So no, as people that have businesses, we need great teams around us. We can't do it ourselves. So you really do have to pay attention to your team and you really do have to cultivate that. And, and make that experience beautiful for them. It can't just be like, you got to get this done, got to get that done, got to get, you know what I'm saying? It has to be, Absolutely. Has to be happy. <laughs> it's interesting because culture, we always ask people like, why are you leaving that company? And it's because of the culture. It's yeah. the support. So, and it's interesting. It's not about money. Yeah. And I feel if people can be the authentic self and, and they can really be who they are and not worry about it and get rid of their insecurities and we help people with all these type of things, get rid of fears, live an abundant life, not a scarcity life. I'm a big proponent of. And well, people say, well, it's easy for you to say, Ben, you've been wildly successful. What well, that's not what it's about. It's not about money. Because when I contribute to people in every conversation, someone's contributing to you in some manner. When you can contribute to someone, okay, and it's not about money, you can impact someone without money. 100%. What ends up happening is that you open up this space for people to, to grow and become who they are. And yeah. what it does is it provides a great culture. So yeah. for everyone out there, if you can provide a great culture and what you do, you'll see your employees, your retention rate will be high 
and they'll stay with you because it's the experience. It's that experience that people want. It's just oh, yeah. like if you go on a date with someone, you know, it's great. You could be a handsome man or a gorgeous woman, but at the end of the day, when you unpeel the onion, it's like, who am I, who am I connecting with? Am I connecting right. with them? Are they a good listener? Right. Do, do they understand? Are they open-minded? Do they seek the truth in what I'm saying? All these great things you look for when you connect with people in a relationship. And I think it's just a lost art because we don't learn it as kids. We have yeah. to evolve into it and, and finally become it, you know, as we get older. And I was okay. wondering, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you always want to, you always want to leave people better than you found them. And then you always want them to have a good vibe from you when you're around as well. You know what I mean? You, if you, if you want to have that positivity and that go getter and energy, you also have to carry that as well. You know what I mean? Right. So you are responsible for the energy of your company as well. Absolutely. Um, so many people, Kavita have a conventional way of living their life, this right. in the box approach to their career. And you and I are very comparable in that where you you seem to beat your own drum like I do. I started my business when I was 23 years old. I've always done things differently. I used to sell cigarettes when I was eight years old at a bar oh. in Highwood, Illinois. Uh, you know, don't, don't tell my parents, even though they That's know. terrible. <laughs> well, you know, you could shame me later. But <laughs> share more about approach to your career. Cause I was curious, cause I know you beat to your own drum and yeah. drum and how has that evolved over the years as well? Yeah. You know, I've always been a person that you can't put in a box. You know, it's always like the minute you think that you have me pegged, I'm, I'm doing something else. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a middle child. I mean, I don't know if it's middle child syndrome or what, but I just, you know, it's funny because I wanted to do sports. And then like, at the time my boyfriend was like, you can't do that. And I was like, watch me. So it's like anytime people doubt me, I'm like, really? Here I go. You know what I mean? And and it's also fun. Like I love the challenge, and I and I that's how I approach life and I'm in business. Like I always want. I think about what I want and what I want to do. I don't think about if people like me necessarily have done it anymore. Whereas when I was in my teens and twenties, I kind of had that limitation in front of me. Um, but now it's just like whatever I want to do, whatever I want to accomplish, wherever I want to travel to, you know, wherever I want to go, whoever I want to see, you know, I just do it. I just do it because I know that this is my book. My life is my book and I'm the author of it and I want it to be a damn good book. So <laughs> I want it to be fascinating and inspiring and juicy and exciting. So. Yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting if you had a camera that followed around you 24 seven, how would you conduct yourself? I do. I do. Yeah, that's and right. I can tell you that we, her brother, my assistant's right here, you know, her brother films all of our, our, um, content. And so, yeah, we pretty much do have cameras following us everywhere and she's always with me in all the photos. So I love the camera. <laughs> and no, it does, I, it does I, make me behave better. You're very well behind it. So, <laughs> I don't, I don't believe you talk much about your personal investing philosophy. Is there anything you feel comfortable sharing about what you invest and what yeah. you're talking about to build your wealth? And, yeah. and do you ever invest in uh, commercial real estate? Um, not commercial real estate. No. Oh, okay. no, no. <laughs> what do you, what do you real invest? Estate, yes. Yes. Real estate. Yes. Personal, okay. you know, residential real estate. Um, but you know, and I, and I want to get into commercial real estate too, but what I, I will say is I feel like, for me, because I've made mistakes along the way, like the whole Bitcoin thing. And then I, I had my Bitcoin with BlockFi and then they filed chapter 12 and, you know, they're bankrupt now. So I'm probably never going to get my money back. <laughs> um, and then they send you this form with like 50 pages of how to like do whatever. And then I'm looking at it like, oh, I don't want to fill this out. Bye. Um, so... <laughs> I would say stick with investing in what you know, what you love. Like I love Tesla. I have a Tesla. I've had Teslas. Like I love it. I own stock in Tesla. Like yeah. even when it goes up and down, I know it's, that's just temporary when it goes down because I know it's going to go up because I know I believe in the brands. Like I love it. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like Bitcoin. I kind of, I was, you know, it wasn't like I was an early adopter. I wish I was because then I would have made money in it, but it was more like I got in a little too late i would think and then also i didn't really know so much about it like I, I did but you know i would just say invest in what you truly like understand and know and what you love you know it's very simple it doesn't have to be so complicated i just ordered a uh a plaid 
Uh, it's a, I'm actually You're picking so fancy, up, Ben. Picking up on Friday. <laughs> Can't Tell them what a plat is because they might not know. Well, it's uh, just a Model S. It's the top line version. I think it goes like one point in, in goes to sixty in one point nine seconds. No, literally, when my kids are in my car and don't worry, they're in the car seats. But like, if yeah. we're like on like a street and there's like nothing around, uh huh, just like hit the gas and you're like in the gravitron. It's like woo! Yeah, it's <laughs> it's like, like yeah, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I love about what Elon did, and I think it's brilliant, is that you can, you know, let's go, let's talk about wine. Yeah. You know, I, I have white seats in my current Model S, and so you could spill a glass of wine, red wine, on the seats and wipe it off. It's it's on. It's amazing. It's it, it, he doesn't get enough credit. I mean, he's really brilliant. He I really, mean, listen, if he wanted to take it a step further, he could create like you know stainless furniture with his leather seats. He could. Stuff. Well, I gotta tell you, people tell idea. me why do you have white seats, and I'm like, guys, trust me when I tell you, you can get chocolate on here, you can yeah. get black tar, you can get red wine, it doesn't matter, it comes right off. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I think the white seats just make it look so much better too. Sexy, and people can't imagine somebody with kids sexy. with white seats, and it's like Elon has like 12 kids, I and mean, he has like 15 kids. I mean, what do you think? Uh, it's <laughs> it's it's brilliant. It's it's such great technology. So. um I believe you pri prioritize wellness and self care. I am really big into health. I, I work out with a trainer, five at least five days a week. And, uh, and I, yeah, I'm I'm in pretty good shape for a young guy. See those guns? Huh? You know, see those guns? Whoop whoop! You need to like lift up the sleeve a little more, huh? I just rip off the shirt. <laughs> show you my twelve, show you my 12 pack. Um, but what kind of self care things do you like to do, and what do you oh. do for your health? I'm a self-care junkie and I don't care. People used to judge me in the beginning, but now I'm just like, listen, this is who I am. I will spend whatever. Some people spend money on like clothes and shoes. I spend it on self-care. Like I literally, so I work out with a trainer twice a week. Um, he's amazing. And then I, I'll do yoga one day at like a, the yoga studio, studio near me. And then another day I'll do this InfraSlim, like this heated sauna machine that you bike in and then it has oxygen blowing in your face and then it has aromatherapy ozone therapy vacuum therapy all these cool things i do that one day a week. hold on a second you could ride a bike in a sauna is it like so a it, ride sauna it's like it looks like an egg like a cocoon uh -huh. and you like lay down backwards on it and then your, your feet are like so you're almost like laying down but then you the sauna is only in the part that closes where like your bottom half of your body is. So you put it up to like 130 degrees and you're biking in it, but it's the bottom half of your body. The top half is out. You can watch Netflix. There's like a TV there and everything. Are, are you like sweating your ass off in that room? You are like you are, but you don't feel it because the, the oxygen, which looks like like a little uh, microphone, the oxygen is blowing in your face and then you're in an air conditioned, you know, place. So by the time you get out of the machine, Literally, if you follow me on Instagram, you guys can see on my stories if you guys want to follow because I, I post them every Tuesday. Uh -huh. I show how wet my pants are. Like my whole butt is like water, like the size of water. It's like I've never sweat so much. <laughs> but I, I do that and then I'll work out. I have a gym in my house, so I'll, I'll do cardio one day. And then uh -huh. every Monday, because I used to hate Mondays, uh -huh. I used to feel stress on Mondays, like uh -huh. growing up. So every Monday I get a massage. I have someone that comes to my house. Nice. I do like the facials. I'll do like lymphatics. I'll do cupping. I, uh -huh. I'll do it all. I go to the chiropractor once a week after the gym. Uh -huh. I go every like Tuesday. I mean, it's crazy. I do it all. That's, love it. that's fantastic. Oh, I love that. <laughs> but what? also in addition to that, not just like the self-care body stuff, like you're uh -huh. into the wellness, like I love taking my olive oil shots. Like I get this amazing olive oil called the governor from Corfu. And I uh -huh. shot, shot like a shot glass of it every day. Really? Um, what does that do for you? It just helps with inflammation. It helps with I your hair. Nails. Too. A nice. million health benefits. Like I'll have to get a bottle sent to you. Um, I love that. Yeah. And I'm like, I just, I, I'm so sick of taking my vitamins because like lately yeah. they've been making me gag because I have like 30 a day and I just look uh -huh. at it. It just looks like sad. I don't like, I don't want to do this anymore. So <laughs> I switched to Mary Ruth has this like, um, she has these like liquid vitamins. I, uh -huh. I just started. I don't know if it's great. Like I, I can let you guys know in a month, but it's like a shot and it has all your vitamins in it. And then there's a night version that has like your night minerals in it too. And I'm like, this might replace my vitamins. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, that's great. What, yeah. what about your diet? Like what, what's a, what's a typical uh, week look like for you? 
I really don't eat much during the day. Like I have a protein shake before I go to the gym with some blueberries, uh -huh. Uh -huh. low sodium because a lot of protein powder can pack in mycelium and then you wonder why you're bloated. So you got to check that. Yeah. Um, yes. Like, yep. That's a big hack because if you check your protein powder, some of it has crazy amounts of sodium. So never take it before you go to the beach. I used to take my ex-boyfriend's when I was 30 years old, I used to take uh -huh. his protein and I'd wonder why am I bloated? Right. So when you're in that bikini, it looks like you're fat. Yeah. I was like, I look like I, I have like a, you know, three months old here. What's happening Baby in there. Yeah. Yeah. So then I actually started my own protein powder back in the day. This was like, this was like 2013. It was called DD Kini. It was slimming protein powder. And it was amazing. Uh -huh. I, I wish I still had some, <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I do the protein and then I just have like a little light lunch and then it's, I just eat dinner. I kind of really don't eat much during the day, but it's mostly dinner is my thing. And I just try to stay away from carbs. Like if I pizza, it's like once every two weeks or something, yeah. you know? So uh, what are you eating? Like fish or you're vegan? What, what, what do you no, eat? I eat everything. Like, okay. Yeah. So all, for example, tonight uh -huh. I have a meeting, I'm going to this place called, um, Anthony's Runway, which I'm obsessed with. They okay. have, have you heard of Carbone, first of all? Yes, yes. Okay, Carbone is famous for this spicy rigatoni, okay? Uh -huh. Sure. It's amazing. Uh huh. But if you're not eating carbs, it's like you can't eat that. Right. So when I go to Runway, they make me this, like, instead of like a chicken parm, they uh -huh. make like a chicken with like the spicy rigatoni. It's like chicken ala vodka. It's like oh, chicken like spicy that. rigatoni sauce and peas. It's yeah. the same yeah. sauce. Uh -huh. on Right. So, so, yeah. if I, so if I, so if I took you out, where are we going to dinner? Like what, what's the, what's the, what's the choice? We'll go there and we'll get the spicy rigatoni chicken. Cause it's literally mouthwatering and it's the most fantastic thing I've ever eaten. I crave it. And we'll also get like a burrata with like, you know, the tomato and the burrata with like balsamic glaze. Nice. Nice. And we'll probably have to have some, I'm a dessert junkie. Like I love dark chocolate. So something Me with too. dark chocolate after. I and love dark chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> Strong cacao is is fine with me. What do do you bring bottles of your wine to dinner? Like, is and I have them I mean, on market. I mostly have my wine in all my favorite places, but oh, you know, awesome. I do sometimes bring it, and I do have a glass here. I'm sad that oh, you know what I know. What what are you drink? What are you drinking there? What is that? This is, that is this wine. My uh -huh. our, my our white. It's Semillon Uni Blanc and Roll. Uh huh. Is that is that dry? Is that sweet? What what does that taste like? Both wines have no sugar, no additives, low sulfites, and this wow. is very dry. Uh huh. Um, this wine is all over Aspen. All of the properties and restaurants that we got in in Aspen wanted our white. Okay. Um, our rosé is all over the Hamptons, and we have the white there as well. And then we will be placing the rosé um, in Aspen for summer, but they all went crazy over the white. It's like our top thing right now. So uh, you don't, you don't do any deep weds. You don't do like a cab or a, a red zen or a, you know, or a blend. You know, I tried. Nice. I tried to. I wanted to launch a red, and uh, no. I could not find. I would never put my name on something that I wouldn't drink at home right. myself. And I could not find a red that was good enough one day. But I want only award-winning quality blends, and so yeah, I'm not gonna. You're not gonna have like crappy wine with Ben on it. No, it's not going to work. Right. So wh wh where, where does a man like me get to pick up a couple of bottles? Like where would I, is there like, do I go to Binnie's? Do I go to Total Wine? Where can I go? Is that where are you located? I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm in Southern California. Okay. Southern Cal. So you, County. Have, you would order direct from our website. Okay. So we're not in Cali yet, but we can ship to Cali direct. Oh, okay. Well, What's the web? What's the best way? I, if I want to buy, want well, to buy a case of uh, of yeah. the red rose, like how do I go about doing that? So you would go to sip s i p shane dot com. So s i p s h a n n e dot com, and then you can buy the wine right off there. And you also should check us out on Instagram because that also links to the website. So between sports, wine, fashion. TV personality. You're also involved, I notice, in a lot of charities. Yeah. And share more about the organizations you're involved with. And 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 that way we can talk about how can other people support what your what your love is. Yeah. So I'm on the board of 211 Broward and they actually work nationally. Like if you don't, if you can't call 911 and you have an issue, you would dial 211 nationally. Okay. And it's an amazing organization because they also run the suicide hotline. And literally, we because of the work they do, 
people call in that want to potentially commit suicide and they leave alive with the support and the help that they need, which is amazing. Because, you know, as you know, suicide is kind of a, a national um, crisis going on. So I'm on the board of 201. They also help people with resources. So like, say you have issues, like you can't pay your mortgage or you, I don't know, have some sort of emergency that 911 wouldn't accept. Um, maybe you, you know, are homeless or you, I don't know, there's some crazy animal outside your house. You don't want to do 211 is a resource to connect you to every single agency and charity and nonprofit out there, which is awesome. We just now actually last week had our yearly 211 awards. It's called the 201 Nonprofit Awards. It's kind of like the Oscars, but for nonprofits. So we award all the different nonprofits in South Florida who are doing an amazing job. And it's literally my most favorite event. It's like super glamorous. We all dress up. It's during the day. And I get to see every single person doing the most selfless jobs ever in one place, which is awesome. Oh, I, also with, yeah, I also work with other organizations, you know, like um, stuff in Africa as well. My parents are from Kenya and Tanzania. Oh. So I, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> and um, I do a lot of work with um, like different organizations, like the African Tusk Organization, Veterinarians International. I went on like a mission trip with them to Kenya this past um, May, which was unbelievable because it was my first time in Kenya. And I got to see like so much. It's just the most beautiful people. They're the happiest people. They're so little. You see these little kids running around helping their parents farm in these big farm areas and do all this stuff and they're like barefoot with like barely any clothes and they're smiling laughing and they look happier than half of america it's unbelievable you know so yeah i think it's just good to get out there and you know part of i don't know if you ever have anxiety but you know if people ever suffer from anxiety the one cure for that is practicing gratitude and helping others and i do get anxiety here and there and i just i love being grateful i love you know practicing gratitude and helping others. It's just such a great way to put your imprint on the world, you know, especially when you're in the positions so, that we are. So it's so true. Gratitude is everything because you can't do it alone. No. And I've learned you had to, you have to live in a state of love and not fear and be abundant, not scarcity. Totally. You can do that and you can work on your inner self, your, your whole environment changes. I mean, there's a saying is like people look to pursue happiness but if you were happy yourself, your environment around you would change. And so uh, that's as I've aged, I've become more spiritual and more into personal development. I've realized that if I show up as the best version of myself, just imagine how other people can react and learn and grow from what I've been through too. And so I'm a huge proponent of it. I have a lot of mentors invest in a lot of personal development and it's allowed me to become the best version of myself. And when I realized that, when you can become the best version of yourself, you can you can influence people in the right way and really inspire people to live a great life. And that's what I do with my employees and the people and our outside resources of our company. And what I do is is to be able to create that because when I can create, I can change people's lives and make them into millionaires or whatever they want to become. And it's really important because, you know, when you have a gift, you really have to share it with the world, just like you have a gift, you know, you have a lot of gifts. So, you know, we're all works in progress, Kavita, and we always will be. And the name of the show is I own it. And it's about being responsible and owning every aspect of your life, which can be challenging at times for people. And we ebb and flow in life. Was there of a time you could look back and look at yourself and say, I didn't own it fully. What was, what was an example of where maybe you didn't? Oh, yeah. Own? Oh, my gosh. So um, <laughs> when I was pregnant with my son many times, but uh -huh. um, <laughs> when I was probably my whole 20s. But uh, uh -huh. how, how, how old is he now? My son, yeah. um, three and a half. And my daughter's okay. five. But I was okay. saying, I would say like I probably could have done a, a way better job. Of, my whole 20s it was like crazy. Um I will definitely say that, you know, when my ex, my kid's father mm -hmm. broke up when I was pregnant with my son and I was like so depressed and sad, like crying all the time because he was like out, you know, living his life. And I'm like at home pregnant with my baby. And I'm like, I feel so alone. And then looking back, I'm like alone. I was never alone. Like I had a my 
my son inside my belly. Now I'm like, he's three and a half. I'm chasing him around for hugs and kisses. And he's just like, get off me, mom. But like, that was the closest I ever had that sweet little nugget to me. And I wish that I would have like appreciated that and just like lived in the present instead of looking at what I didn't have and like feeling shame because I like, you know, didn't have a man with me to like, you know, rub my back or whatever it is. It's like, come on. Like I had my amazing, beautiful son with me. He was in my body and like, he was with me all the time. I was never alone. It's quite the opposite. Like I said, I was alone. Like I was actually really never alone. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> a lot of women look up to you and, you know, and aspire to be successful like you are. And obviously you're the whole package, you know, you, you, you got the looks, you, you're smart, intelligent <laughs> woman. You, you have been successful. What advice would you give young women out there that look up to you and say, Hey, you know, how, how can, how can Kavita empower me to become the woman I want to be to, to really, you know, develop the life that I would like to have my own autonomy, my own freedom, be able to make choices, not work for the man, so to speak. What advice could you give people out there uh, from things that you've learned? I think for sure that like, you know, I'm a very happy person. Like at this point in my life, like I would say the past, you know, five years, I have just been amazing. Like even with me being single when I was pregnant with my son, I love that I created this brand and it's something that is, is my other baby. And I would say that if you have a dream and there's something that you want to do, and there's something that you think of in your mind that you picture yourself doing, like if you close your eyes and you say, where do I want to be? What do I like doing? Like, what would I be doing if I was like so excited? Like what would make me excited to get out of bed? You know, you got to do that. Whatever it is, you got to do it. And don't worry about not knowing how to do it, right? The secret of getting ahead is getting started, okay? So nobody knows what the hell they're doing. You didn't know what you were doing when you first started in real estate, I'm sure. Like, people kind of know, but there's no experts, you know what I mean? Like, Oprah doesn't know everything. Nobody knows everything. And it's just like, if you have this dream, probably it's not going to go away. You don't want to live with regrets. Just go for it because the most fun feeling is every day being excited to wake up and being excited for that day and not worrying about like how I say I like to get massages on Mondays. That came from a time when I was like dreading the week. Now it's like a Monday's a Wednesday, a Wednesday's a Friday, a Friday's a Saturday, like who cares? You know what I mean? So I would say that, you know, you this is your story, your book. What do you want the contents to be? Nobody else is in charge of it but you. And also, if you do have an end goal, literally, Think of that end goal, write it down on a board, whatever, on paper and work your way back. Like, look at that, you know, if you want to win an Oscar, right? So you find an Oscar winner and you say, well, like, how did she do it? Or how did he do it? Work the way back, figure out how to get somewhere by like working way back. That always works for me. Like trying to figure out how to work my way forward to something. It's, it doesn't give me that vision. Working my way back gives me a bigger, better picture of the different avenues and routes that I could go. And that's another thing. There's not one way to do anything. You, there's so many creative ways and, you know, every person can reinvent the way. So just go for it. However you can with whatever gifts God gave you. Now, I, I, it's, it's a great point. I, and I wholeheartedly agree with you is that, you know, you, everyone lives their own life. They have their own book and every single day you can create your own chapter. You can choose and create what you want out of life. People just let life go by and it passes them under their feet like a treadmill and they don't live life. And you don't think that they're in control. Like you are in the driver's seat. All right. Do you ever meditate like to balance yourself? Do you ever get into meditation? Is that something you do? Um, you know, I make my kids meditate before bed. I mm -hmm. I have a I meditating is so hard for me. I either mm -hmm. fall asleep within like three minutes or like the best meditation for me is when I'm in yoga, but uh -huh. even then Shavasana, when I'm in Shavasana, uh -huh. I'm like, Oh my God, I, I need to wake up. Cause I could literally fall asleep. And then they're going to I'll be here an hour later. You know what I mean? It's hard for me. Cause my brain's always going, 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 but if it's hard for you, it's like, you need it the most. I'm sure I need yeah. it the most. I, I've been, I do it two times a day now, and it's, I started doing it about a year ago. It is the most amazing thing. And here's one thing I doubt. I'll share the secret with everyone. You're in a big negotiation or, you know, I'm getting on the podcast, whatever it is, I'll take 10 minutes out and I'll sit in my office and I'll meditate and then I'll go into a meeting. 
because what that does is it grounds me. It makes me balanced because again, it goes to how do I become the best version of myself? How do I show up? And I was concerned like, cause if I'm not showing up or I'm aggravated or I'm not, it's, it's not good and it doesn't, and it comes out of me. It's not a good thing. So I always want to be calm and methodical and make how do you do it? What do you do? What's your process? Right? One thing I sit down Indian style and I'll sit on uh, one of the ladies who runs my property management division, God bless her heart. She bought me for Christmas, a meditation pillow from, uh, I think the brand is like gum or something, you know, it's like a big yoga brand. I'm sure you know it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I've never had a product from them. So she buys me this meditation pillow. It was a game changer because I was sitting on my ass on the floor and I'm like, <laughs> I would be sore and I'm like, you know, so then I'd have a pillow underneath me. I couldn't get comfortable in that. And then she got me this meditation pillow. It was a game changer. So I sit on the pillow. I sit Indian style. And I do a certain type of meditation. And one of my mentors taught me. And it was a game changer for me. Because wow. what it allowed me to do was to become more aware of my surroundings and people. So, like, for example, if I'm sitting out there on your balcony with you, right, and we're having a conversation, just like now. I'm so much more focused and present. And guess what? We build a deeper connection. You yeah. feel more respect. You feel more love for me. You, I'm contributing more to you. You're contributing more to me because I'm aware. So I started realizing this. I'm like, this little change in my life has such a drastic impact on how I show up with people. You're selling me. Oh, I'm telling you, it's it's just it's just the facts. For and that's for me. I mean, I'm sure it works for a lot of people. A lot of people meditate. And so some people do like TM meditation. I haven't gotten into that. I do a certain version. Which but one do you do? Because I have a Calm app. I don't know what it is, but like I'm closing my eyes like three quarters of the way and I look out about 10 feet and I'm just, and I'm I'm still, and I drop all my thoughts. You have to clear all your thoughts. Yeah. So one thing I've learned, okay, and people do breath work and stuff, which is great. I've had a breath work expert on the show. She was spectacular. But one thing I've learned is that when you do it right before bed and you clear your thoughts, you can get a good night's sleep through the night. The reason why people don't sleep through the night, and sleep is so important, okay? So important. It's the number one thing for health, and I'm a big advocate. Like, I, if if uh, I'm like, I'm going to bed at a certain time every day. I don't care. I don't, I don't negotiate with myself, right? I keep my word to myself because if I don't love myself, no one else will. Thank so you. I realized, like, okay, I'm going to bed at a certain time. I'm a, I want eight hours if I can which was a challenge for years. Now I, now I can do it. But I found that meditation before sleep, before I sleep is so huge because if you clear your thoughts, that's what, you know, when you get up at night, it's one thing if you got to go to the bathroom, right? But if you get up at night and you're thinking about something like, so for you, you're like, oh my God, my sales are down on the wine or, or my kid did this, or I got this going on and you're stressed. Or, or the worst thing you do is you start checking your phone Okay, because that's a killer. Oh, and you won't the light on that alone will get you. So that's the other thing. When I wake up, I roll out of bed, I start meditating. That's the first thing I do. And I don't look at my phone usually for 45 minutes or an hour after I wow. wake up. That's and awesome. when I started doing that, I realized it's such a better way to start your day. And because you want to start off with, you know, with good positive thought yeah. of, okay, I'm going to have a great day and we're going to do this. And so for everyone out there is that my advice would be is take time away from your phone when you wake up, take a half hour, an hour, whatever you can do, whatever you could stomach. And when you can do that, it allows you to start your day a lot better because the worst thing you do is you check your phone and guess what? You have to start tackling your challenges. That's the first thing you gravitate. It's like, or you okay. get in an Instagram hole where you're just like scrolling, right. scrolling, scrolling. I mean, right. And all of a sudden you're following the real Ben Reinberg and like you're <laughs> into his content and it's like, you can't stop. Just like with Kavita. I mean, yeah. love your, love your page. What's the best way to follow with you so people can engage with you? For sure. On Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what's the handle? Just at Kavita. At Kavita my first and last name. Okay. Right. Yes. I am on there doing those reels putting out that content, doing yeah. those stories. Maybe I'll post some meditation stories since I'm inspired by you now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can, you can do, you can do all that stuff. You can, you can, uh, you can see what works for you. I can tell you though, if you start meditating, you'll be calmer. Yeah. You'll be more present. Uh, it helps your listening skills. 
you know, really wow. hone in. And the connections that you make with people will be a lot better too, because, because of the focus and the listening, it's, it's, it's a game changer. So something to think about. So we're going to wrap up with our three questions and, uh, uh -oh. I've been waiting for you to come on, but uh, you'll be good. You'll be good. All right. So in our studio in Laguna beach, we have a couch and I would say, all right, Kavita, get on the couch and lay down, close your eyes. How, how old are you now? I'm not telling my age. Yeah, you have to, this is part of the show. You have a choice. Nope. I'm 30. All right. Let's, let's, okay. Let's say you're 25. Okay. So, you're this incredible, talented, sophisticated, successful woman. Yes. And you've had a lot of experiences and you have your own business as well. And you can go back and talk to your 16 year old self with all the knowledge experience you have as this mature, sophisticated woman. What advice would you give yourself knowing that, you know, now that would help you with your life, if you can go back and talk to yourself. Go be that magical bee you know you are. And don't listen to anyone's negativity and follow your dreams. They will always guide you to the right place. Well said. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I feel like I was talking to myself. That was sweet. You are. You're talking to yourself. So it's a, it's I want to give my 16-year-old self a hug. I want to be my own mentor. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our last day on earth. Okay. God forbid. It's just me and you. Mm -hmm. And it's our last meal. Mm -hmm. What are we eating and what are we drinking? And it's your choice. Well, I mean, obviously we're drinking Chenet Rosé and Chenet Blanc. Um, <laughs> we are definitely eating pizza. <laughs> and we are, no, we are drinking that because, you know. Okay. We want, we, we, we want to feel giggly and happy. And oh, we are going to be eating pizza and we're going to be dipping it in ranch. And that's Ooh, what I like that. What kind of pizza are we eating? <laughs> I'm thinking like maybe a half and half, like a half, mm -hmm. like maybe like a half cheese and like a half pepperoni with Ooh. say pineapple. Perfect. Yeah. And well, then we've got to have good. ranch dressing. It can well, be organic, but it can't be like, it's got to yeah. be like full fat. This this Chicago kid can ride with you on pizza. Is there is there a certain type of pizza you like? Is there like a certain restaurant or something you you gravitate to? Okay, so I there. Okay, this there's different things. There's this place called Mister. Is it O One? Mister O One. Uh huh. Been here to Fort Lauderdale. They're all over. Uh -huh. um, it's the most delicious. Like you have to go on their Instagram. It's like art. He makes these like pizza things that look like stars and then the, the star uh -huh. part of the crust is stuffed and it's delicious they have this one pizza that's coffee he put coffee on the pizza really? i drink coffee and I, this pizza uh -huh. i crave it it's delicious it has some sort of like pepperoni-ish or some sort of meat on it but it has coffee all over it. it's delicious um but if i'm at home and i just people literally will probably unfollow me for this but i don't care I love thin crust because again, I need to do the like no carb, low carb thing. Right. Mamanos has the best thin crust ever. It's like really? thin. And I've been eating it since I was probably this thin pizza. I've been indulging in it since I was probably 20 years old. Many stories where we've eaten this pizza late night. It's the best. I can order a large thin crust and eat the whole thing myself. Like literally. You like it. You like it when it's crispy. I like it. Super thin and crispy, but there's yeah. something. It's like they put crack in it. It just it tastes. You got to order it one day. Just trust me. All it's right. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> but of course, I would love like a you know a, a, I, I love New York slices. It's just I don't have a place. Like when I'm in New York, I always get a New York slice. It doesn't matter where you go. I just go. Right. Actually, one time when I was in New York, I went to this um, place and I ordered like a fancy New York slice. And then I went to this. What was the other place called? Joe's? No, the yeah. other one. Joe's Pizza. I ordered a fancy New York slice, and then I went okay. to this place. It was ninety-nine cent pizza. It uh -huh. was like it was like a it looked like a gas station or a convenience store. And uh -huh. we did a little pizza comparison. The video is on my Instagram, and I liked the cheaper one better. Like the cheaper. Wow. You just never know in life. <laughs> so, in our studio, we have a grand piano, drum set, and six electric guitars. And if, and by the way, if you are ever in Laguna. Uh, I would love to have you in studio. You'd be so much fun and we'd Let's have a blast. 
and <laughs> you're welcome to come whenever you want. So you imagine you're in studio with me and it's your choice. Okay. You can have any band or musician come in and play us a song and they could be living or deceased Kavita. Who would you have in the studio with us and what, what are they playing us? Oh my gosh. Like you're gonna think I'm a dork, but I would definitely want like Beethoven or Mozart. I listen to classical music all the time. Really? My <laughs> God, you just you're just shocking me. Out every, wow. I would want Beethoven or Mozart, and then I'd want uh -huh. Justin Bieber there because I'd want them to do like a mix. Oh, like a, <laughs> like a, a duo, a collab, a duo. Yeah, I'd, I'd want him to sing. He's he has a beautiful voice. I'd want him to sing, and I would want them to play all their their instruments. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank you for coming on today. What a treat. I feel like I'm talking to myself because we have so much in common. It's it's kind of scary. I remember when, when uh, we were doing our deep dive on you. I said, I said, I said, my God, I feel like I'm I'm looking at myself. So I love that. Keep, keep rocking. So um, and I mean, just thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. I really appreciate it. If you are interested in listening to more episodes like the one we have today with with Kavita Shane, please log on and and feel free to watch us and drop kick that right hand button and click subscribe on YouTube, as well as feel free to go to BenReinberg.com and you can follow me on all social media platforms to learn more about commercial real estate. Go to AllianceCGC.com. We have one of the hottest funds in the United States, the Alliance Medical Property Fund. If you're interested in investing in medical properties, feel free to log on to our website. And feel free to keep following all of our shows and, and listen and click the like button because the more likes that you click, the more viral this content we could share with the rest of the world. Kavita Shane, thank you so much for joining us. You own it. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you for listening to the I Own It podcast with Ben Reinberg. To hear our past episodes and connect with Ben, visit benreinberg.com.